Now, if you look at that word, the word says, and the books were open. You will notice that for us to be set free in Revelation chapter 4, Jesus had to break the seals that covered, that locked up the books. And Jesus opened the books to declare our liberty. That means for every one of us, there is a word of destiny. We were all born into destiny. And in the books of life, God had preordained an end for us. Now, allow the oil bring you to that end. You don't give, you don't give yourself the end. I don't know whether you understand what I'm saying. If, if, if I had all the time to preach here, I will take us into the deeper aspects of this from scripture. But all of us has a destiny attached to us already. We are not making our destinies. We are not choosing it now. And it is the business, they that wait upon the Lord, they shall renew their strength. The Bible says we will mount up as eagles. Now, it is from the place of waiting that you are mounted up as an eagle. And when you are mounted up as an eagle, you are given a direction. You fly towards the direction. Now, it is he who mounted you there that gives you that direction. Now, what we are doing is that we are not allowing him to give us directions. We are, we, are, we are deciding and dictating and choosing our own directions and imposing it on the Holy Ghost now. So we are using the Holy Ghost like a horse. We are not allowing him to use us as his temple. Now, that is the contradiction and the conflict we are having in the church now. We need a broken church. We need a church that will go back into prayer and say, Master, not my will, but your will be done. Master, where is your will in my life? Where is your will in this purpose? Look, Paul had a choice not to go to Rome. Even after he had a prophecy that whoever, whoever owns this particular is was going to be tied in chains by Apollos. Apollos gave him that prophecy. He still chose to go and die. But he had a choice. He knew that was the destiny of his oil. Let me tell you, our missionaries came under attack in Kano three weeks ago or two weeks ago. Terrible attack in Takai local government, in Danko. Because the people had boasted that their territory had been there fallow. There had been no church all this while. And we are called to go to places that others do not go into. We, we are called to go to fallow grounds. So our people had been there since last year, break the ground, started building churches. And because it was breaking the normal thing that was there before, that there should be no church there, and right now a church is in existence, the Muslims decided to snuff life out of them. They woke up one day and their buildings were down. They were arrested by police. Even when they went to report to the police, the police refused to take statements. At the local government level, the police turned an eye waiting for them to be killed first. But we had emergencies in the last two weeks as we have not had for a long time in this ministry. Now, but the story is this. We had missionaries that were on holiday. One or two whose wives had just given birth and they went to see their wives. When they heard that their brethren were under attack in the field, you would think they would rejoice that, look, they had escaped the attack, they are at home with their wives. No, the missionaries told their wives, allow us to go there. If it is unto death, let's go and die with our brethren. Now, do we still have that spirit in this generation? People will go to die for the gospel. You know that what awaits you there is death. But you choose contrary to life to go unto death because you think that might be God's will. Paul thought of that in his days. Now, so the question is, what the anointing that I have, what has it ordained for me? Has it ordained lashes for me? Like the apostles did. I mean, they were called apostles because they had a lot of credentials. Do we still carry the credentials of the apostles of those olden days? They were ready to be flogged. Oedebo came under attack right here in Kaduna. Everybody ran. He refused to run. He put on his priestly garments, entered into the church, put on loudspeakers to the four corners of the earth and began to prophesy in his church. Why didn't he run away? Because the anointing kept him there. And as long as he was there, God maintained dominion over that territory. That day, his church was not burnt down. If he ran, his church would have been burnt down. I am here in Kavanchan because we are here. Kaduna State has not fallen into the hands of the Muslims. In fact, we are believing for a governor in 2007 because we chose to stay even in the, in the valley of Baka in the valley of death, we chose to stay because that was where the oil placed us. We didn't go after the luxuries of the city because it was where the... You see, 
People give their anointing destiny. They don't allow their anointing to choose destiny for them. You see, the anointing comes upon you to fulfill that which God ordained your life and your destiny to fulfill. Not you for duty. So, there is a lot of correction that needs to take place in the church right now. People need to go back to the throne and say, Lord, what is your will for my life? Not my way, but your will be done. Jesus chose death deliberately because he knew that was the only way by which I can be saved. Our generation will be saved. Even when he had a choice to step down, even when he struggled with that cup, he decided to drink it and said, not my will, but your will be done. And that's what the church needs to begin to seek now. The will of God. The Bible says as ministers, my meat is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work. That is my meat. That should be my desire. Not to build for myself a kingdom, build a luxury around me. As far as I'm concerned, ministers should live in luxury as if there were no luxury. If they have lost, if, if they have access to it, those who don't have access should not feel smaller than those who have. But we have turned it the other way around. You are humiliated because you don't have those affluences around you. You are nothing. Very soon heaven will tell who, who, who is the Lord and who is not the Lord. There is the divine purpose for the individual. Why was I named Emmanuel Kure? We need to ask ourselves that question. Why was I born? Why was I made to come out from a tribe that is unknown in the whole of Africa, drugged in a bush that up to now, even if I mention the name, a lot of people will never recognize it. Zutru Mago or Zutru Pama. Among the Zutru villages. Why was I born there in Zango Katav local government? Why was I born? To some poor family, even though know, I have royalty in my royalty in my background, my great grandfathers were the rulers of my people. They resisted the first Islamic onslaught. But why was I? Why did God choose to throw me there? Why was not I born a white man? Why was I not born in America? Why was I not born in Asia? Why was I not born in Venezuela? Why was I not born in the Antarctica? Why was I not born? some other scheme. Why was I not given a choice? Because where I was born, where I was born from, was where my divine purpose lay. It was from that scheme that I would be able to fulfill the purpose for my existence. So I should not be ashamed of it. So I need to ask questions. 